forest cheers. It howls for the arrival of the idol. Neither Gimnasia is Napoli, nor Diego is the same from the 80s. But it turns out that the magnetism is the same, both from the idol and the people. Even if he doesn't play anymore, the man preserves the same ability to thrill and, paradoxically, that's what's so thrilling. Here in Argentina, we thought that he was immortal, always capable of getting up. And perhaps that denial, thinking that he was bulletproof, slapped the face of a country and the world. A football player, a man from the slums, an artist, a junkie, an avenger, a leftist, a pioneer, a playboy, a freak, a villain, a symbol of popular redemption. It's all true, it's all real, and it's all too much. Every second is vibrant, every detail is shocking. This is the story of Diego Armando Maradona's last year on this earth. His last year as a manager in Argentinian football. The last miracle of Diego. Gimnasia needs a miracle. One of the oldest clubs in Argentina is threatened once again by relegation. It's almost a fact. The average point system, so particular of Argentinian football, is a sentence for Gimnasia y Esgrima de la Plata, which must accomplish an overachieving campaign just to stay in the same division. The catastrophe seems imminent. Shrouded in fluctuations common of the Argentinian economy, Gimnasia is experiencing a time of managerial distress and, above all, of sporting discredit. The relegation is a torment once again if the team doesn't improve. It will be the sixth time it's going to play in the second division. That's why the word miracle is the only one that convinces the Lobo fans. The Wolves, one of the most popular fan base from the city of La Plata, the capital of the Buenos Aires province. It's because of this last part, and for the world miracle, that in the Bosque Platense, everybody is talking about God. The lambasted president of the institution, Gabriel Pellegrino, reckons that he already called him God. Yes, the very same. Argentinian football is sensing it. It believes in miracles. And the thing that resembles one the most is called Diego Armando Maradona. Maradona sits down at the small table of Argentinian idols. His historic exposure, unique to the growth of the massive media, puts him at the center of the scene. If Pelé was the idol of the radio narrative and Messi the YouTube one, then Diego was the TV idol. And it turns out that the time and context goes perfectly hand in hand with his history. Football and war have nothing to do with it, but it's undeniable the relevance of the Falklands conflict during that England-Argentina match from the 86 World Cup. Immortalized with the subsequent winning of that trophy, his figure becomes iconic and even a church is erected in his name. The stand, the pride, the homeland, they are all Maradonian cliques that make him a symbol and, in his country, they put him above anything else. Since the pibe came out of Fiorito and discovered the world, he's no longer a pibe, and the number 10's vital force is low, as if his own heart knows how far away he is from the land that loves him wholeheartedly. It's time to feel the sun on the face. The Argentinian media asks themselves if the comeback is real. 2019 doesn't seem like a year with good news for the average pocket. And that's why the potential arrival of Diego raises some relief. To repatriate the idols in tough times is something necessary. Diego's flirting with Argentinian football is historic. Filled with comings and goings, love and grudges, of Boca and Newell's, of Argentina's national teams and bubucelas. But his last two years keeps him away. The sports and social media are telling the people all about his stint in the Emirates and his resonant stride through Mexican promotion with Sinaloa's Dorados. From a distance, it's hard to tell how Maradona is actually doing. Diego mutates. His steps are weary. His speech is sluggish. His time zone seems imbalanced. One year for us appears to be ten of his. Months earlier, Diego had his left knee replaced. 
it was shattered, which made him put all of his body weight on his right leg. He can't sleep, and anxiety disorder took his ability to rest away from him. His image is rough, even though sometimes a smile and a sentence reminds us that the hits don't bring him down, that his essence remains the same. But gymnasia? If Diego already looks vulnerable, why go inside the mouth of the wolf? The answer will be an x-ray of his football and personality. Maradona lashes out forward as an essential virtue, always confident. When you think you know him, he goes the other way. His dribble is the weapon he picked up from the slums and hunger is his only enemy. No one could imagine the Pibe de Oro in southern Italy after a tough time in Barcelona. After injuries, scandals, and sickness, Diego searched for serenity in Naples and found the complete opposite. His arrival to Naples, the city's club, was as unexpected as the situation he was about to face. His presence there immediately changed the tune of the days and he nurtured from the context. I want to be the idol of Naples' poor children because they are like me when I was a kid in Villa Fiorito, set upon his arrival. The Maradona effect. The idol absorbs all the flashes. He becomes a shield. The challenge was competing against the North and, why not, strip down all the historic differences of the Italian centralization, unique to the country's identity and the ruling powers. At the sporting level, the arrival of the world's best footballer raised concerns, like considering Naples winning a Scudetto, a feat that could never be achieved through its history. But the present didn't help either. The Gliazzurri just came back from saving themselves from relegation by only one point. That's why on July 5th, 1984, the San Paolo Stadium erupted like Mount Vesuvius upon the arrival of the greatest in the world. A greeting from the loudspeakers to the 80,000 souls gathered and a promise made with a football at his feet. Diego and his football fulfilled it. Turin and Juventus, the capital cities of Lazio and Roma, and the Milanese Inter and Milan fell to the Maradonian revenge in Naples, of sporting and footballing character, but of spiritual redemption. The losers became the winners. Two Scudettos, one UEFA Cup, and one Italian Super Cup, in seven seasons, put Naples on the front page of worldwide soccer. Nothing was the same after Diego in southern Italy. And it seems that this last part is what Gimnasia needs. Reclaim much more than the sporting and football elements. It's not just an issue of saving them from relegation. It's about changing their wiring. That afternoon in July 1984 at the San Paolo has similarities with September 8, 2019 at the Bosque. That's when Maradona arrived. It doesn't matter if he's fatter or retired from professional practice, if his knees hurt and even if he has trouble speaking. There he is, along with his engine, adversity. Anger is my fuel, he said in 1995, and it's the answer to why his challenges exist and the constant search for the myth. It's going to be very tough for the Lobo. Diego is already thinking about Racing, his first match at the Bosque. The road starts there. Here we don't play with machine guns or revolvers. Here the cross is sent backwards and it's pushed in by a teammate. Just like that Napolitan July, everything will change this September in La Plata. Now the word miracle with Maradona on the bench makes a lot more sense. This is the last story of Maradona. 10 chapters of passion, football and Argentineness to save Gimnasia from relegation.